Hi, I'm Charlie Jaffe, and you're watching The Current. In this week's episode, we'll be speaking to students about their job prospects and views on the Occupy Wall Street movement. Then I'll have the chance to sit down with Michael Kazin, professor of history at Georgetown University and expert on American social movements. But first, let's go to Allison on the street. Hi, I'm Allison Noyes with The Current. Today, we'll be interviewing Georgetown students about post-graduation plans despite economic uncertainty. Personally, I feel pretty good. I do think that I'm going to get a job, but the overall uh, outlook is rather gloomy. I'm sure at some point they'll be great, uh, but as of right now I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with my life. I mean it's a little scary just because I feel like most people aren't getting the jobs that they anticipated that they would, um, and maybe in fields that aren't necessarily exactly what they're majoring in. It it's, seems to be kind of tangent tangential. Yeah, I interned this summer with Citigroup, so I do have an offer to go back at the end of the year. Um, so, uh, obviously, very happy to have that. I mean, my major is not particularly in demand, um, so I don't really have as many opportunities to stand out and be uh, sought after in the job market, but I mean, I'm plugging along, doing what I can, so. Do you know anything about the Wall Street protests that have been going uh, on? Yes, I know a little. Well, what are, what are your thoughts, especially as someone who might work on Wall Street someday? Um, they're it's relatively misguided. As much as people are angry at Wall Street in particular, it's more a trend of people that are in power that are getting more of the influence. And it's not necessarily something that's exclusive on Wall Street, and it's something that people don't quite understand. I'm here with Michael Kazin, whose latest book, American Dreamers, How the Left Changed a Nation, covers social reform over the past 150 years. Professor Kazin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. As we've seen, the issues brought up by the Occupy Wall Street movement are relevant to college students. And we're intrigued, but a lot of us are a little confused. What exactly is Occupy Wall Street, and why is it happening now? I think it's a protest against economic inequality. It's a protest specifically against the people uh, at the top of uh, the economy who um, the, people, the protesters believe uh, had the major part in causing the economic crisis that we're still suffering from. The unifying issue, I think, is uh, a desire to um, have the 1%, as they call it, uh, uh, take some responsibility. Following up on this sort of 1 verse 99 theme we're seeing here, what are the deeper implications on this as to American society and the people there? What is this saying about the real roots of everything? Well, I think, I think uh, you know, in, in this country, people have always voiced their opinions <laughs> loudly. Um, you wouldn't see this movement as large as it is, clearly, without the recession and without a sense that a lot of young people have, uh, in particular, I think, that what's the future going to bring? Are they going to have jobs? Are they gonna, is Social Security going to be there for them when they retire? Is Medicare going to be them for, there for them? Um, what is the world going to look like uh, that they're going up in? And there's a lot of frustration and questioning and confusion about that question. And sometimes that leads people to say, well, let's just go sleep in a park for a while and talk about this. A lot of the frustration here has been focused on Wall Street, but Wall Street didn't just sort of develop in a vacuum. There have been other players and roles here that have brought us to where we've gotten. Who are these players and what, have, what role have they played? Well, sure, Wall Street is a symbol. Wall Street's always been a symbol uh, in this country since the middle of the 19th century. But clearly, there's a lot of people, players here. You know, there's been a sort of creeping um, diminution of regulation, a creeping sense that uh, business is better off when it's not, you know, uh, looked over and uh, too closely um, regulated, too closely controlled by, by government. And uh, I think that, from my point of view, uh, that was a mistake. And and uh, the, the fruits of that mistake, if you will, um, have come back to us. Occupy Wall Street doesn't, has made it clear they don't want to be affiliated with the electoral right. system. However, it's undeniable that there is going to be an effect on it. And we you know, always like to keep our eye on 2012. How do you think all of this is going to manifest itself in the elections? That's a huge question. A plurality of Americans, regardless of party, support the idea of uh, the Wall Street protests by a two to one margin. And Democrats overwhelmingly support the idea, 81% by a recent poll I saw. So that means that there's a lot of um, reason there for at least Democrats to support it and for Republicans to be careful about how they criticize it. Do you think that this is a going to be a turning point with tangible effects on society in America? 
argument I make in my book, American Dreamers, is that the left, and I think this is part of the left, the left historically in America has had its most impact changing public opinion, changing the public dialogue about certain issues, rather than building institutions, rather than building third parties, uh, rather than um, becoming leaders of mass movements for very long. And that could happen with this as well. Uh, it already has changed the dialogue to certain degrees. Will that continue? You know, it depends on what the movement does. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Professor Kazin. We really appreciate it. And before we wrap up, we're going to go over to Allison in the studio with two students with different views on the Occupy Wall Street protests. As someone who is a part of this demographic, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these protesters are recent college graduates or even still in college. What do you make of these protests? What do you think? Uh, unfortunately, my opinion of many of the protesters is they're protesting something they're not all that educated about. Um, in my opinion, as someone who's worked on Wall Street, not necessarily the Wall Street, but in the industry, um, investment banks play a very important role in our overall economy. Uh, they connect investors to job creators. And as you can see, a lot of these people are unemployed. And they're really protesting some of the people who are going to be creating the jobs for them. What do you think about these Occupy Wall Street protests? So I've attended the Occupy uh, protest in DC in, uh, at McPherson Square. Um, clearly, the inequality, the worsening inequality in this country is um, definitely is certainly a problem, especially for our generation when we're out there looking for jobs and we're accruing massive amounts of student debt to get to college and get through college so we have good opportunities coming out. Um, who was talking about student loan debt before before this movement? Barely anyone. And now, you know, politicians, it's suddenly a hot issue to talk about. And that's really important to our generation and it shows the things that do happen, good things happen when people are willing to hit the streets and speak out and say, you know, this isn't right. That's our episode. I'm Charlie Jaffe and you've been watching The Current.